In our family, my brother was always the creative one. I knew this from a very, very young age, and it was a label that we kind of gave each other. He was the creative and I was the intelligent one, if you will. I always did really well at school. I was always studying. My brother was always drawing. He was always playing music, etc. So he was very creative and I was very not creative. I was so jealous about his ability to draw. He could draw anything and I couldn't. And when I put pen to paper, it didn't look anything like it was supposed to. And so I knew that I wasn't able to draw. It was only much later in my life that I realized that the reason, the reason he was able to draw was because he kept doing it. When he started, he also couldn't draw, but he kept going. He would read books on how to improve his drawing style, drawing technique. He would throw away the paper and start again. He would rub it out and start again. He would redo it. Uh, he would just keep going. He was constantly doodling and drawing and scribbling and sketching. And I would take out a piece of paper, try something once, realize that I couldn't improve the paper. And so I'd rather leave it blank. And I left it at that. Now, at this particular stage, it seems so incredibly obvious to say, well, gee, Vaughn, if you had just kept going, you also would have been able to draw. But nobody told me that. In fact, in our family, we kind of embedded those labels. John's the artistic one and Yvonne's not. So it didn't occur to me, nor was I given any indication. There was nothing in my life that indicated that there was a possibility or there was a path for me to get from here to there. As far as I was concerned, you were either born with a talent for drawing or you were not. And so for me, it was a very binary issue. It did not occur to me that if I carried on practicing drawing, I could get a little bit better and a little bit better and a little, and a little bit better and a little bit better until I was actually able to draw whatever it was that I wanted. It did not occur to me. This is the difference between a fixed and a growth mindset. The feeling, the binary approach to your labels I either can do something or I cannot do something. I either am or I am not something versus a growth mindset, which says I can't do something yet, but I can keep trying. I can work at it. I can improve. I can take another step. It sounds incredibly simplistic and it sounds incredibly obvious, which it is. This is an incredibly oversimplified example of a fixed versus a growth mindset. But I wanted to start with something that's really easy to illustrate and really easy to understand and just understand the impact that this one difference has in these two people's lives. For me, I didn't draw and I never did. Because at that point that I put pen to paper, I couldn't do it. And so I assumed that I would never be able to. And therefore, what was the point? Okay. So the impact on my life in that particular area is huge. I never drew and I never pursued art in any way, shape or form. Because the first time that I put pen to paper to try, it didn't work out. Okay. Versus my brother who had a growth mindset in that particular area who instinctively believed that he could just improve it a little bit, that he could just try again, that he could just try again, that he could just do it again, maybe just improve a little, get a book or try a little more and the next three attempts would look a bit better. In that particular area, the impact that that belief, the difference in that belief has in that particular area on our lives, I think is, is obvious. The same can be said for any area of our life where we have a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset and we're not aware of it. This is not to say if we struggle with a fixed mindset in one area of our life, we will struggle in all areas of our life. You know, we, we have different strengths and weaknesses in different areas, but my starting point is to say the mindset concept is a very, very basic one. It is something that is incredibly popular. It's, uh, you know, it's all over the show, but it's also very oversimplified. 
the impact that it has on your life, the impact that it has on your daily life is something we really need to scratch at and understand. And that's what we're going to explore. And so that we can understand how this impacts your studies, your thoughts, your emotions, etc. on a daily basis.